Love this. This um, is such a unique ecosystem. My first career was um, raising money for nonprofits and community organizations. And now I'm in this entrepreneur world. And so what you have created here is actually a beautiful blend of both where you have community organizations and, and boots on the ground stakeholders who want to bring the best to their individual communities. And then the innovative ideas that really need partners and the help in co-developing. So thank you so much for um, giving me this chance. I am going to share my screen. Uh, I'll say that I'm, uh, interrupt me. Um, this is informal, this is a collaboration and um, I, I love questions and hopefully I can answer most of them. Okay, so first, um, if you have not yet had a chance to download our app, I'm encouraging everybody to take a few minutes to do that. You can get to our website that has both the Google um, and the Apple Store links, because I thought instead of telling you what we are setting out to do and why we're doing it, it might be best just to have people play with the app um, and we can answer questions and, and get into that conversation about how technology can really bridge the gap between um, healthcare and really admirable service providers and the people who are in need. So just giving a broad overview, nearly half of all Americans are either giving some form of care to an aging or ailing adult, or they are the recipients of that care. And as baby boomers age, and as fewer individuals go into the health and caring professions, those stepping forward to address the gap, um, the care gap, are those who are most motivated to provide the best care for their loved one. That's a family member, it's a friend, however you define family, it's a neighbor. Uh, and it was me. Um, I found it caregiven after caring for my dad during his final years. And despite the best circumstances all around, I often felt like I was the first daughter to ever be losing her father. I found being a caregiver overwhelming and complicated. It's expensive, it takes endurance. And um, I always felt like I was failing and behind the eight ball. Uh, it's unnecessarily hard and I knew there had to be a better way. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I knew that there had to be a better way. And um, I believe now there is with Caregiven, obviously. We have our MVP out um, in the market. Um, and what Caregiven is, is Caregiven was designed for family caregivers or informal caregivers by those of us who have gone through that um, and our provider partners um, taking trusted advice and aligning it to that moment in time when a family member needs the most support. So simply put, Caregiven provides trusted guidance for caregivers when and how they ask for it, which in the reality of today, it's on their mobile devices. So we reduce the friction of miscommunication. We release some of the pressure of coordinating family. We help overcome distance and difficult emotions. And we make the right connections at the right moment so that the resources are utilized and opportunities are not lost. Uh, we offer a self-directed education and intuitive tool to reduce task management and promote human interactions. As I said, we use technology to help humans be more human and pulling right from the Health Thai website, um, you know, a shared value is our goal is to connect the health systems, the human service providers, the legal, the financial, all of the different aspects that go into the complexity of aged care we feel that the best way to get those resources actually utilized for the care of our aging or ailing is by empowering that informal and family caregiver. So that is the bulk of my presentation. Um, again, I thought we would just hop right into the app or just start having a dialogue about how we came up with the, the product that is available today. Uh, when Jacqueline introduced or gave us this opportunity, she said, don't forget to have an ask. Um, and our ask is quite simple. Uh, we're looking for people to help us co-design the next iteration of our product. Uh, this is a very human issue. It takes diverse thoughts and diverse experiences. Uh, 
from rural mindsets to urban mindsets to people with wealth, without wealth. We, we have a great opportunity to really work collaboratively to de design a solution that again, delivers the right information at the right time um, in a way that human care navigators aren't able to. So Caregiven itself is primarily a digital platform. We aggregate resources. And as we'll see when we go into sort of the interaction of the chat bot, um, we have an approach of delivering um, what, giving people options um, and empowering them to then take advantage of the resources that are available to them. So with that, I am going to attempt to share my computer or my um, device. Uh, share. And can everybody see that? And now, hopefully I can get it to go away. Um, okay, so if you have had a chance to download the app um, and want to pepper me with questions. Um, if not, I will run through the simple onboarding experience um, and sort of the rationale behind what we ask and when we ask it and why we ask it. So we, we have some values in the company. Um, the, the top value is that uh, we only ask, uh, we only deliver information that is meaningful to the informal caregivers and empowers them in their work giving care. And we only ask for information when um, we need it and we try to communicate um, why uh, and how it will be used. So I'll just add my name. Um, and Anthony um, on my team, please feel free uh, to pop in at any point. Um, so, so who are we taking care of? Um, as our product evolves, uh, and as we bring in more expertise, it's very, very important for us as a company to um, empower individuals to understand the dynamics of their personal relationships. So it's not just who are you taking care of, but you'll see what is the dynamic? Are they same generation caregiving? Because that is a very different conversation for somebody talking to an older generation. In my case, my dad was the silent generation. If the doctor said, hop on one foot and rub your belly and you'll be cured, he said, okay, yes, ma'am. My generation is very much saying, well, where is the logic behind that? And how do you, how do you create a good environment in which those conversations can be had um, and, and aren't wasting a lot of time? And add right here, even if you aren't currently caring for someone, um, put you know, family member's name in, some, something that gets you to it, because if you don't put something in for um, uh, someone that you're caring for, you won't be able to get into where Candace is now. So um, the foundational piece of Caregiven is using the one device that 90% or 86% of informal caregivers always have at their fingertips, and that's their, their mobile phone um, or their app. Uh, and so we know that there's phenomenal care partners out there in the world, uh, professional care navigators uh, who uh, can interact with individuals and help them get to a solution more quickly. We also know that those numbers are fewer and fewer, and yet the need for caregivers is growing. So we have a purely digital platform that ultimately will springboard that family to the human care navigator in their health system or in their network. Um, but our goal is to do as much as we can digitally, uh, knowing that millennials and Gen X, that is their preferred way of seeking out content. So in this case, Alan was my father. Um, I called him something else. I called him Papa Duck, which is true. Um, and then you'll see that the app will start referring to my dad as Papa Duck if it doesn't crash on me. Oh. So when we were 
uh, doing the human centered design around caregiving when we were um, working with a UX design team to really try to get at what are the most acute pain points for family members. One of the biggest pain points is you're constantly learning on the fly. You don't know what's coming. You don't know what's important. Um, and you there's just so much, there's so much paperwork. Um, and so what we've done is we're, we're gonna go through a little flow that asks a number of questions uh, that can then help you be led to the right information and the right activity at the right time. So how important is collecting um, legal documents? I don't need help with this, I'm a lawyer, let's say. Um, what about managing family dynamics? Um, this has been uh, the top thing that people have when we look at our user analytics. That's the number one thing that's pressing on people's minds. Um, and how important to you is coordinating care with family and friends? I don't know. Um, and then we ask this question. Um, and we put this in here because caregiver well being uh, is, is hugely important. Um, hugely. Uh, in that an engaged and supported caregiver uh, is less likely to place their loved one in a care facility. In fact, an engaged caregiver will delay care facility placement for up to two years. I believe T-Care uh, may have presented to this group at some point and they've done considerable research on um, caregiver well-being and the impact that has on their loved one. So in asking this question, we're twofold. We want to learn about the emotional state of the individual caregiver. We also want to remind them to take a moment to, to be present in their own journey, caring for their loved one. We also, what we do with this data is if somebody indicates that they're overwhelmed, uh, we acknowledge that. Um, we'll say, we won't give them a very complex activity. When you're overwhelmed, it's probably not the best day to fill out an advanced care plan with your loved one. But if you're calm, if things are good, that would be the right moment in time. So as you can see, I answered a few quick questions and it asks me again, do, do I want help? Um, which is again, an empowering um, uh, activity. So uh, another foundational element of caregiving is how do you build out a care circle? Um, how do you really include not just that primary caregiver that, that say that the eldest daughter who is rising to the occasion to take care of their father, but how do you get the distance caregivers, the neighbors involved? How do you create an environment where everybody can contribute what they can, when they can, to really enrich the care journey for their loved one. And so um, this will ultimately take you to what a care circle is in Caregiven. Uh, you can read an article about how we define a care circle, uh, create an activity on if you had to uh, uh, create a list of everybody yeah, I need somebody with legal expertise and I, I need somebody who is great at home maintenance and I need somebody who understands insurance documents. How would you create that team? And then pretty quickly, you'll start aligning names uh, to that individual. And then what we can do is go back and add them to our care team. And to do that, um, don't allow. Um, I'll add Anthony. And what will happen is Anthony will be invited into um, this care circle and will be given an opportunity to see important documents, participate in care coordination, and um, have a level of transparency into decision making uh, that then allows communication to happen instantaneously throughout the app. So I'm going to pause there because I start geeking out about this product. I'm so proud of it. And I really, I want to hear some of your questions. Um, we can talk about the business model here and, and, and what we've initially learned. Um, I can do whatever this group wants, um, unless you want me just to talk at you and that's no fun.
You know, Candice, this is an excellent opportunity. Um, so let's open the floor for some questions. Usually we have some really, this is a lively group typically. So is there anybody you'd like to go first? Be brave. Yes, um, Dr. Brown, please go ahead and unmute and, and talk to, with us. Thanks very much. This seems very exciting. I have a, a several questions. One is, um, what is the cost of the product and the services, either on contract or purchase or whatever? So that's something that we um, need to figure out. Uh, when we tested this originally with uh, caregivers, they said that they would want to pay for it because then they would trust the storage of their important documents. And they themselves said they'd be willing to pay up to $10 a month. Um, but as a team, we've taken a step back and said, well, what we're doing is providing content that everybody should have access to. Mm -hmm. So we will have in a direct to consumer sense, a, a free version. And then if people want to use document storage, um, when we release the um, family time capsule with the stories and those videos and recordings are, are stored, that will be a paid feature. What we've also learned too, Dr. Brown, is the best way to get caregiving into the hands of the people who need it is through their trusted relationships, their financial advisor, their healthcare professional, their employer. And, okay. and those entities are motivated in offering caregiving for various reasons. In the case of an employer, it reduces absenteeism, presenteeism. And so we would need to collaborate and say, what is the pricing model there? If this is an employee benefit, is it a voluntary benefit? Is it a supplemental benefit? Um, and, and so there's a great opportunity there. Anthony? Uh, that in, a, in addition to, um, I, I see with our revenue model moving forward, finding those industries, whether they are very tightly associated or even from an ancillary perspective associated uh, with things growing out of solving these issues. It's not just a little bit of education and a little bit of, of coordination. I see us long term uh, as we build this out, uh, looking at um, how do we put people in contact with grief counselors? How do we put people in contact with uh, the need for uh, durable goods and things like that? We, we, we are ne will never be a marketplace, but we want to take what we've been through, which in some cases was, well, I'm dropped off in the middle of an ocean now that mom has a problem. It's uh, I'm in a rubber raft. I have no idea what direction to go in and I have all these needs. Uh, we want to take that kind of thing and provide a North Star. And in, in the case of, of this, that a lot of that is time. I would love, I dream of the day, for the value to be worth this for an employer, for other people, uh, home health or, or a variety of um, entities, companies and organizations to provide to the people that uh, they depend on. Because if they, if we're shortening the learning curve or coordination curve of it, what may take hours down to minutes, then there every single person benefits. And that starts with the person receiving care. If it doesn't take me five hours to figure something else out, that gives me four hours and 45 minutes with my dad to provide better care for him rather than sitting around, bumping around on my phone or desktop, trying to figure something out and get that out to my siblings and get that out to his brother and everyone else. So um, I would- last quick, last quick question. How do if, you, or what are your plans for data uh, security and privacy? So we have set out from day one to be uber secure and private. So we comply with GDPR, CC, the California version of that. Um, and again, we don't ask for information that isn't useful to the family member. When we are in a position to ask for, say, a, a diagnosis or a type of illness, that will simply to be guiding individuals um, to specific content. And they'll always have the option to opt out. Uh, and, and not provide um, us with that information. When we store documents, it's very, very secure as well. Obviously there, there will be identity documents, there'll be um, legal documents. We've been working with um, insurers to go through the process of how do you make sure that people are being truthful and that they're not changing the beneficiary after mom has a diagnosis or is unable to do that on her own behalf. 
So we have an, a, a robust team of experts to really protect that as well. Thank you. I, I'm going to quickly go to Alice, who has her own journey with making apps do all kinds of work. And we've yes. had, she's a, a previous presenter. So Alice, it looks like you might have a question. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, I, I happen to have two people that I help support, my daughter and my husband, both uh, brain injury related. So is there a potential to add, um, to add both of them to, to this? Absolutely. And uh, what's very interesting is that we have two members of our team who um, have been traumatic brain injury caregivers. Uh, and that is definitely something on our horizon, looking for partners. Um, and, and, and Alice, what you're raising is a really important question is, is that there are some baseline needs of all caregivers, but then you get very niche very quickly. And fortunately, that's a content and a content management issue so that when we do ask what type of caregiver are you, I'm caring for somebody with a traumatic brain injury, we can point them in the right direction in a lot fewer clicks. And then going back to um, Dr. Brown's question, we might be white labeled by, you know, the Colorado Institute on brain injury. Um, you know, there may be opportunities or, or that ultimately is where we will be moving is um, there is brand trust out there. We just want to make access to those resources available. Yeah, I, I've done a lot of things um, with apps to help support my husband and my daughter in terms of memory and organization and, and things like that. And I teach about it a lot. So well, we need teachers. We need subject yeah. matter experts. Um, I'm not going to voluntold you in this group, but uh, again, uh, you know, when I look at all of the faces here, I imagine all of the stories, the, the parents, the siblings, the children, the, I just want to do what's right. And, and that's the company we're building is Anthony says it all the time. We want to give individuals the opportunity to have their thumbprint on the app, whether that's, I like this feature. I don't like this feature, or this is, you know, this is really important to me. Here's my story. And, and that's the type of company we're building. Yeah, this is nice. wonderful. I, I just want to say again, this is the purpose of Health Tie. I'm really excited about this connection. Yeah. One thing I, I neglected to say is that I really wanted everybody to put their information in the chat. So if you want to contact Candace or Anthony, or if you have something that you'd like to share, please put that in and, um, and I'll do my best to make sure that those connections happen. Um, I see that Julie has a question in the chat. Um, she's asking, um, thank you so much for your presentation. I was wondering, do you foresee any expansion or customization, excuse me, customization for other complex medical care? My family member has someone close to her suffer a serious spinal cord injury. While it wasn't um, something that I was thinking that, uh, well, and now she's thinking that this would have been really helpful. So, so that's a great question. Yeah, uh, obviously our users are going to drive us in the directions that we need to go to. Our big vision is to create a platform that enables the delivery of the right information at the right time. We call it an aperture moment. And then we start working with these partners who can then say, okay, spinal cord injury has unique resources and opportunities and grant funding and federal funds. How do we package that into our CRM? So that's what our tech team's doing um, is building out this platform so that when we do co-design with an entity, say a nonprofit, and there is a grant, we have the foundational delivery. We have the, the generalized how to be a solid caregiver, and then we can bring in those nuanced very specific and niche opportunities. I do want to add quickly that when I founded the company, I was thinking end of life. Um, and that's something that we dance around. What is end of life? Our, our product spans the last five years, um, but we try to talk about life limiting. We don't want to diminish hope, um, but we also know that it's human nature to uh, not do something until you have to do something. And so I would love feedback and guidance on how that sits with you. How do you talk about this, this topic? 
Awesome. Thank you. Well, one good way to start talking about that is to have presentations like this one. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I've been in any other conversation where it has been so openly discussed. So thank you for that. Um, we have time for one more question. Uh, we typically end at 1.30. I'd like to invite the caregiving team and anybody else who would like to stay on to stay on. Uh, but our last question is from Carol Howarth. And um, She's asking, uh, where are you on testing and what are you looking for with testing? So our product is in the market. Um, so we have MVP out there. We have 185 users on the platform right now. Um, and our goal is that initial learning. Uh, we've learned that uh, the chat bot guides individuals to the information they need. Um, if we leave them into our care journey, they get overwhelmed. So we're looking for feedback and users, um, uh, just eyes on the product um, right now for the foreseeable future. Uh, so we know that um, this, you know, acquiring users, this will be a word of mouth, a referral product. Um, we are looking for pilot partners, community partners um, uh, that we can then start collaborating with to see how would you deliver this to your stakeholders? You are a, a small hospice, you are a senior center. How would you make this available to your community members? What materials would you need? What would you need to see in the app? So that's what we're looking for beginning about mid-July is a, a pilot opportunity co-design. And I, Anthony, we have, a, we have a situation where he unmutes himself and I know it's time for him to uh, talk. Um, well, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes it's just a cry for help. Um, but the, um, uh, the, the way that I would also answer that, uh, Carol, because there are so many different backgrounds that are being brought to something that is so new, is what I would be thrilled to hear is after you download the app and take a quick look at it, what would be the most compelling reason for you to suggest someone else use it? And what are the one or two things that you wish it had to share with more people? That's obviously going to be something sort of individual to where you are professionally, personally, or both, but that's important. In the early days, we really want this. I, I talk about where we are in two phases. We will gain insight from users a year from now based on a platform that is really, um, more, we'll call it marketplace ready, right? But in the early days, I see a lot of our, our insights coming from people who've been through this professionally, personally, or both. So we're gaining insight through wisdom at this point. And it's really difficult to, to guess what that may be for you. But those are the questions. If you were sitting across from me, not virtually, but physically right now, that's what I would say. Take a look at the app. What did you love? And, and please share that maybe with others, but what are the things that may keep this from you shouting from the mountaintops, everyone on planet Earth should have it. And so that would be sort of a personal ask, I guess, of sorts, but that is really important for us, I think. Um. Awesome. I am quickly trying to make sure that I haven't left. I think, um, what I saw that Rebecca Van Wick had, uh, you know, just basically said caregivers are really burnt out right now. Like, uh, obviously, that everyone's had just an intense year. And so um, what I'd love to do is support those caregivers. And also uh, just thank you, Candace. Thank you, Anthony. This has been a wonderful presentation. It always seems a little short, but I like to leave people wanting more. And so um, I invite anybody to come back and, and reach out to me and I'll connect you to Candace. I can see that there's been lots of um, emails and things shared in the chat. And so um, please reach out to one another. A big round of applause for uh, Candace and for Anthony. That was really awesome.